Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Monday, June 16th, 2014. Now, in the news today, we see a combination of two factors, both of them designed to take America down economically as well as socially, culturally, a total collapse. I think this is highlighted by the article that we have on InfoWars today from Michael Snyder. The United States of debt, total debt in America hits a new record high of nearly $60 trillion. Now, in the article, he points out just exactly how much money that is because you can't get your head around the numbers, billions, especially trillions. He said, for example, if you started spending $80 million every single day since the time of Christ, you still would not have spent $59.4 trillion, which is the amount of the debt. Then to put it in another perspective, he says 40 years ago, the United States was just merely $2.2 trillion in debt. Now in 40 years, we have made that 27 times larger. So what is it that's doing that? Well, it's a massive warfare state. We should think about that as we see the collapse in Iraq and we reflect on the policies that brought us there, the lies, the distortions that brought us there and the futility of what we've done in every one of these continuous wars going back to the end of World War II. And we're gonna look in the program as to, of course, who benefits from that. It's very clear who benefits from that. It is not an argument about the incompetence of government. It's about how government is being manipulated for certain people to make money. And they don't care what the cost is, either in debt or in the American blood of soldiers who die for their policies. But there's another part of that now. And of course, it's not just the warfare state, it's the welfare state. And Obama has been doing everything he can to expand the welfare state, but the collapse just isn't happening quickly enough. Now, understand that both open borders and welfare states, either one of those can destroy a country. Uncontrolled immigration, uncontrolled welfare, either one of those will do it. Together, they will do it very quickly. And that's what we see happening now by design, as people in the Border Patrol unions are pointing out, as employees for the Department of Homeland Security is pointing out, and of course, they have been gagged with criminal threats for talking to people. That's what our government does. No longer any transparency, no longer any accountability. Instead, anybody in any part of the government is threatened with dismissal or even imprisonment if they talk about the policies. But these policies need to be talked about. Let's look at what's happening at the border, for example. We see today in reporters uh, from InfoWars that have gone down to the border here in Texas, which is a major entry point, they say church groups now are shipping illegals deeper into the United States. Now, these are the Obama anchor children, the tools of the collapse. And as they're pointing out, this is a Department of Homeland Security uh, person said that they cannot get any attention for, or relief down here. The agent wrote to us last week in a distressing letter prior to the DHS officialdom imposing an official gag order threatening criminal charges for agents who dare speak out. He said, however, prior to that, we desperately need immediately manpower, resources, and a firm support of Americans. This is de facto amnesty. The president and the secretary of Homeland Security will ignore this issue as long as possible in order to let as many illegal aliens gain entry into the United States as possible. Now, what they saw there when they were monitoring this at a bus station in McAllen, Texas, they saw these children now being taken by church groups. And so the question is, is this an act of compassion? Is it misguided compassion? Is it really helping these children? I would point out that what you need to think about is the instructions that you get in an airline. When they tell you that if you're traveling with children, if there's an emergency, the oxygen masks will drop down and they tell you what to do. They tell you to first put it on yourself. Why? so that you can help these children. We have seen over and over again the compassion of Christians who go to other countries, try to help them create an infrastructure, get water, do things necessary to live in that country, to help themselves, to lift themselves up, to teach them essentially how to fish rather than just giving them a fish. We've seen Christians go out of their way to adopt children from foreign lands, a multi-year process, tens of thousands of dollars typically to get this through. So it's not an issue of compassion. It's an issue of misguided compassion. A compassion that is misguided is going to take down this country because the purpose of this is a Cloward and Piven strategy. We've talked about this many times. Alex has mentioned it many times. It goes back to 1966, nearly 50 years ago. And what these two economists, these two social politicians, uh, the socialists, 
had put together was a policy where they said we need to destroy the United States economy via a welfare state so we can then rebuild it into our socialist utopia. This is a tantamount to what was said in the Captain America movie, for example. The villain says to Captain America, we need to destroy the society so we can rebuild it the way we want it. And that's exactly what Chairman Mao did in China with his cultural revolution. He essentially destroyed the economy, saying that he could then rebuild it in his own image. But there's another aspect of it. And this is what Christians really need to think about as well. And that is Plato's Republic. For the longest time, Authoritarian governments and dictators have always said, I want the children at as young an age as possible so that they're mine. Now we see these children being brought in, treated better than any Americans, treated far better than the veterans who are not housed in, in military facilities, but these children are brought in and housed in medical in military facilities at very nice accommodations compared to what we do for Native Americans, for veterans in America. What are these children going to see? Well, first of all, they're going to see a government that looks after their every need as far as they're concerned. They're also going to be separated from their family. This is something that's very new, the number of young children that are coming in. They're going to grow up as minions, as vassals of a new 21st century feudalistic state. I believe that's the other aspect of it. We've seen that happening, and we're going to talk about how we've seen precursors of that in years past. But as I was mentioning before, we see Border Patrol agents as well as Homeland Security crying out for help, talking about how the, order, the borders are just opened up to terrorists, to criminals, as well as to children who can be victimized by these criminals. And Christians should think about whether or not they are encouraging that kind of behavior of people putting even more children at risk in this dangerous journey coming to America. But we also see today Huffington Post carrying a story about the Border Patrol Union, who has said that they believe that this is intentional. The Border Patrol Union has said they believe this is an intentional policy of the Obama administration, not just reacting to an emergency situation. Border Patrol Union mocks immigrant children on Twitter. That's the headline from the Huffington Post. Now, what did they say to mock the children? This is the tweet. New annual job rating areas, babysitting, diaper changing, burrito wrapping, Cleaning cells. Law enforcement? What's that? And then they put a hashtag, low morale, to which the liberals, as well as Huffington Post, respond with, let the racism flow. And they responded by, what race, what's racist? Those are the duties that the agents are being assigned. That's what they're concerned about. They're no longer enforcing the laws of this country. You cannot have uncontrolled immigration into a country and not lose the social fabric that's there. But it's far greater than that. As I pointed out, it's going to lead to a balkanization of the country as well as having a captive class of children. Obama always wanted to have the children who are going to be his Obama Youth Brigades. Remember when he was campaigning, the Obama Youth Brigades. And remember back in 2012, we reported that Homeland Security graduated its first core of Obama brown shirts, the Homeland Youth, and they were called the FEMA Corps. Isn't it interesting that it's FEMA that is now involved in this rescue operation? And it was FEMA that was graduating these brown shirts, these Obama brigade children. And of course, Obama has stated many times that what he wants is a large civilian corps that is going to be dependent on the government, that is going to work for him that's going to be as large or larger than the army. A very dangerous idea, something we don't need to see happen. We don't need to be creating even more dependency on the government, and yet that is their policy. And so how does this work out? Well, they're not getting the kind of treatment that most people who come into America get, and that is the TSA inspection. We saw this happen to an actor, a famous actor from the Austin Powers series, the guy who plays Mini Me, Vern Troyer, posts a cheeky picture of being searched by TSA, agent, TSA agents while security reps say that the screening was standard procedure. Well, it's not standard procedure at our border, is it? Not at all. And of course, as we learned from lawsuits in the past, this is something that is simply done to deny Americans their freedom and dignity. When John Corbett filed his lawsuit, he learned in discovery documents that in 2011, at the same time the TSA was threatening to turn Texas into a no-fly zone because Texas reps were rebelling against this kind of manhandling, this kind of molestation of men, women, and children by the TSA, they were threatening to turn Texas into a no-fly zone, and he learned in their own documents, they admitted at the very same time that there was no threat 
at either airports or on airplanes. There were no terrorist threats. And yet they were doing this. Why were they doing it? Because it's part of a controlled takedown of our freedom, of our dignity, of our economy. Now we're gonna come back in the next block and we're gonna tell you about the warfare state as we see the collapse of the Iraq campaign, as we see ISIS moving through, and as we see more signs of what have been, as everyone knows, massive continuous wars as well as uncontrolled military spending. And we're gonna be talking to our InfoWars reporters down at the border of Texas and Mexico. They're down there reporting on what's happening at the border and its role in the collapse of America. So stay with us, we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Dr. Edward Group. Today I'd like to talk about the war on women. You've experienced and heard about the benefits of super male vitality. Now, the new formula has arrived. Introducing the new super female vitality. I have specifically designed this formula to help the body naturally regulate itself without the use of artificial hormones. Key ingredients chosen from the highest quality sources. Each of these ingredients works synergistically with the female body in order to maximize overall vitality. You've heard the reviews and the feedback on how the original super male vitality has revitalized relationships. Now, both the man and the woman can have the revitalization in their own bodies with super male vitality and super female vitality. Secure your super female vitality today from our limited stock at InfoWarsLife.com. This is Alex Jones for InfoWarsLife.com. The latest in preparedness is now here. An electrically stabilized colloidal silver solution that can be added to both your home cabinet and preparedness pack alike. Concentrated to 30 parts per million in what has been dubbed the survival silver solution. And it's entirely free of toxic artificial additives that are loaded into many products. Purchase your bottle of InfoWarsLife.com silver bullet colloidal silver today. And find other amazing supplements at InfoWarsLife.com. Welcome back. Now in our first segment, we were talking about the planned implosion of America as far as the welfare state is concerned. But of course, there's also a warfare component to that. But briefly review, the article today that was on InfoWars from Michael Snyder, he says, the United States of debt, he talks about how the total indebtedness of sovereign debt of America hits $60 trillion. And of course, that's up by a factor of 30 in just the last four decades. Now, how do we get there? It's the welfare state as well as the warfare state. But first again, to recap the welfare state, it's not just a crushing debt. It's also, as he points out, a coming tsunami of demographics with the baby boomers. That's what the Obamacare massive bailout of the insurance companies is about. Think about the bailout of the mortgage companies, and this is essentially the same thing with a demographic surge of medical care that's coming. They want to transfer that to the sovereign debt of the United States rather than have the insurance companies pay for it. And of course, they get a windfall profit in the meantime by selling policies that are way beyond what anybody needs. For example, a single man being required to have maternity coverage. So that's one aspect of it. We also have massive unemployment. Now, they use a different term for that now. They talk about people who are out of the workforce. They're not participating in the workforce because they've redefined unemployment. They need to come up with a different number. But of course, in 36 years, this is the lowest it's been of people who are participating in the workforce. That's the easiest way. That would have been called unemployment in years past. But the main thing is the warfare business. And we see that in the collapse of Iraq. What is that costing us? Well, as Kurt Nemo points out today on InfoWars.com, the war industry stands to make billions off of the ISIS threat. He says, in the war business, timing is everything. And just last month, it was announced a few outstanding members of the military industrial complex would stand to rake in about a billion dollars if an arms sale to the Iraqi government was approved by Congress. Considering the current situation in Iraq and alarm bells echoing through the halls of Congress, the sale will undoubtedly go through without a hitch. And he gives several examples. Beechcraft Defense Company standing to gain $790 million. AM General is going to sell Humvees to the total of about $101 million. Raytheon.